The intent of this part 6 video is to review the B-17's visual bombing accuracy while in combat. We will review radar bombing accuracy in the next video. The intent of strategic aerial bombing is to destroy the enemy's ability to wage war by destroying its war-making industries and reduce the enemy's will to continue fighting. In-service bombing accuracy never lived up to the training accuracy levels. Couple words on training versus combat formation bombing. During a training sortie, each of the B-17's cadet bombardiers sighted, tracked, and released a single bomb on a well-visible target. The bomber would not be flying in formation, and the student released the bomb visually using the Norton bomb sight. Most of the training releases were at lower altitudes and slower speeds than would be experienced in combat. Extrapolated training accuracy data shows the bomb is expected to fall within 400 feet of the target if released under typical combat formation speeds and altitudes. For reference, a 400-foot bomb strike radii is shown overlaid on this building. Bombers in combat release their bombs either by visual sighting or radar sighting. Let's review the typical 1944 visual combat bombing procedures of the 8th Army Air Forces over Nazi-occupied Europe. More tonnage of bombs were dropped by the 8th Army Air Forces in 1944 than all other years combined. Each bomber will be carrying 12 500-pound general-purpose bombs distributed within the bomber's four racks. The bombers will be flying in a tight 36-airplane combat box formation. The 36-plane combat box will consist of three squadrons. Each squadron will consist of 12 planes. The lead, high, and low squadrons will arrange themselves within the group to provide optimal interlocking defensive firepower. The combat boxes will be separated four miles behind each other. As the combat box approaches the initial point, the IP, the 36-plane formation will separate into three 12-plane bombing squadrons. The planes will maintain their formation positions within the squadrons. Each squadron will take turns bombing the target. Only the squadron lead plane will be sighting the target with the Norton bomb sight. The bombardiers and the other 11 wingman bombers will have been replaced by a toggleer. The toggleer will be responsible for releasing his bomber's ordnance when the squadron lead bomber drops his bombs. A smoke bomb will be the first bomb dropped by the squadron lead plane. The intended target point is the mean point of impact or MPI. The MPI is the aiming point defined during the pre-flight briefing. The MPI is a better way to define the bomb's impact location rather than target point. The center of the 12 plane squadron's footprint pattern will be at the MPI. The 12 plane squadron's planform footprint will be roughly 520 feet wide and 400 feet deep. The lead bombardier will aim at the MPI but will have adjusted the Norton bomb sight's trail arm such that the first bomb will strike ahead of the target's MPI. If the lead plane aims at the MPI, the rest of the formation's bombs will fall short. All bombers will be salvo releasing their bombs. You would expect all of the bombs to land within this footprint. After the bombing run, the squadrons head to the rally point, the RP, to reform back into a combat box and head home. Radar navigation and bombing started in September of 1943. Radar bombing is also referred to as overcast bombing, blind bombing, Mickey bombing, H2X bombing, Pathfinder bombing, or PFF bombing. PFF is an abbreviation for Pathfinder Force. Overcast bombing occurs when visibility levels prevented visual bombing. Targets may be obscured by clouds, haze, or smoke. Radar will be able to see through these visual impediments. The squadron's lead ship would be replaced with a Pathfinder plane. The Pathfinder plane was specifically equipped B-17 ship where the ball turret was replaced with a radome. The radome would house a radar antenna. The MPI would be sighted by the radar. The radar operator would work with the bombardier to provide relevant Norton bombsite data in locating and targeting the bomb release data. Like visual bombing, the other bombers in the squadron formation would release their bombs when the Pathfinder bomber released its smoke bomb. Radar bombing allowed more bombing days as cloud cover was no longer an obstacle for fleet grounding. Unfortunately, radar bombing is much less accurate than visual bombing. 
This chart represents the tonnage of bombs that were dropped per month by the 8th Army Air Force's heavy bombers over Nazi-occupied Europe. Bombs dropped by fighters and medium bombers were excluded. The x-axis is a month and year. The y-axis is the tons of bombs that were dropped over Nazi-occupied Europe during that month. The area plots represent the bombs dropped by either lead plane using the Norton bombsite only or the squadron's bombs were released on pathfinders using radar sighting. Note that overcast bombing was a dominant bombing tonnage drop during the winter months of 1944. This chart represents the cumulative tonnage of bombs that were dropped by B-17s and B-24s by the 8th Army Air Forces over Nazi-occupied Europe. Bombs dropped by fighters and medium bombers were excluded. Slightly more tons of bombs were dropped by MPI sighted by Pathfinders than unassisted visual release. Formation bombing accuracy is best described by counting the number of bomb strikes within a thousand foot radius of the intended target's MPI divided by the number of bombs released. For example, if only 50 of 200 bombs released landed within a thousand foot radii of the MPI, bomb accuracy could be measured at 25%. The 8th Army Air Forces considered bomb strikes outside of 3,000 feet radii to be in gross error. This graphic represents a 1,000 foot and 3,000 foot radii distance from a target MPI. The mission would be defined as a failure if only 5% of the bombs landed within the 1,000 foot radii. This chart is a tabular data representing the visual bombing accuracy of the 8th Army Air Forces. This chart represents the bombing accuracy during good to fair visual bombing by a formation lead. Radar bombing accuracy is not included in this chart. The x-axis is a month and year. The y-axis is the tons of bombs dropped during that month adopting visual bombing methods. The area plots represent the tons of bombs that fell within 1,000 feet of the MPI and beyond 1,000 feet of the MPI. Notice the steep decline in visual bombing that occurred during the winter months of 1944. This will be discussed in the next bombing series video. The x-axis is a month and year. The y-axis is the percentage of bombs that fell within a defined radius of the MPI. The two plotted curves represent a 1,000 foot and 2,000 foot radius. Peanut butter spreading the average bombing results through all months shows that 32% of all bombs dropped by visual means by the 8th Army Air Forces fell within a 1,000 foot radius of the MPI. There are several 1944 bombing accuracy peaks and valleys in the chart worth unpacking. In January, February, and March, the weather was foul and visibility was poor. This time period also included Big Week, where Bomber Command intentionally tried to draw out the Luftwaffe for a fight by targeting critical German aircraft production facilities. This led to a reduction in bombing accuracy. During April, May, and June, bombers were assigned to support the D-Day invasion. Targets included French railways and coastal defense emplacements. Weather improved and many missions were along the French coast at lower altitudes. Squadron bombing size was reduced from 12 planes to 6 planes. These factors increased bombing accuracy. Bombing accuracy continued to increase during July and August due to good weather, diminishing fighter threat, and lightly defended targets in Belgium and France. Bombing accuracy decreased in September and October, mainly due to weather and targets that were more heavily defended by flak. The Germans were redeploying their flak guns from Belgium and France to cover German oil industries and vital strategic communication centers. Bombing was also conducted at higher altitudes. Higher altitude bombing correlates to lower bombing accuracy. Bombing accuracy further decreased in November and December, mainly due to poor weather and formations flying at higher altitudes responding to the increased flak threat. Recall that the flak threat decreases by one half for every 5,000 foot increase in bomber altitude. Bombers were targeting heavily defended German oil production centers. This chart outlines bombing accuracy of the 15th U.S. Army Air Forces as reference. We will review the factors influencing combat bombing accuracy in the next video. Combat bomb placement data will show accuracy differences between training and combat is mainly due to target recognition, weather, target type, and if the MPI was sighted by pathfinders. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.